let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm introducing a new topic, uh, one dimensional arrays. And in arrays we're going to particularly talk about declaring arrays. Different, there are different ways of uh, doing that. Then we will get into um, applications of arrays. So there are several examples that show how arrays are used. And uh, then we will get into searching and sorting. Searching and sorting. In searching, I want to cover binary, uh, sorry, first sequential search, and then binary search, and then in sorting, I'm going to cover uh, selection sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort. Algorithm. Algorithm is typically a word, well this could be a joke, but algorithm is a word used by a programmer when they don't want to explain anything, what they did. But what in all honesty it is, is a pattern that is applied in the code that is known to be, uh, it has proven to be useful time and again. So, so you will learn uh, five algorithms uh, in this course. <coughs> okay, so let's get into one dimensional arrays. On the website, you're going to find a PDF that I'm using. I would recommend opening it locally so, in case there are some fonts that are typically small, that you can, you can easily follow along. And then I, of course, have some detailed notes as well. Uh, by next Monday, I'll have a, I should say before next Monday, I'll have assignment eight posted, which will probably require you to use things in, um, it'll, allow, it'll require you to use arrays and everything else that you have covered before. Methods, loops, uh, decision making, and, and all the other things. So what's an array? We're working with one. Uh, we're working with one-dimensional arrays. So so the first thing that we have. There are a few terms to be explained. One is array, and one is um, dimension. I want you guys to be super clear about all of these terms. So array is uh, it's a type of a variable, or it's a that can hold several values of the same type in a single declaration. So if I wanted to create a variable with, uh, to store 100 integers or 100 double values, if I wanted to track salary of 1,000 people, I don't want to create 1,000 variables, right? That would be too much. So that's why we have this data type, which is called an array. So in Java, uh, an array is an object. In Java, an array is an object. And I'm going to be making some notes as I go along. Um, and then dimension is, uh, dimension refers to basically pattern for organizing data. 
So this definition of a dimension will become clear if we uh, think of the um, three-dimensional, or let's talk about two two-dimensional coordinate system. You have the x-axis and y-axis, right? So x-axis is one dimension, y-axis is another dimension. It represents a point, you know, using x and y axis. I could also represent or have an example of dimension where uh, if I wanted to track sales uh, across if I wanted to know names of all the salespeople and product products they are selling. So I could say that for, for let's just for simplicity say we have two salespeople and we have three products. So I could easily say that if I take, if I want sales of sales rep one for product one, and I could say that's a thousand dollars. So then sales rep or sales people becomes dimension one. And the product is dimension two. And when you start looking at the intersection of those two dimensions for each value, you end up with the uh, sales data. So I could also go in and say sales of sales rep two for product three is $5,000, right? And then I could go across, for sales rep one, I could look at total sales for product one, two, and three, and compute the total sales. So, so the concept of a dimension, does it, do these examples help? Sure, you can look at the intersection. You can take a three-dimensional system like Rubik's Cube, and you can slice and dice data. And if I get a chance, I think we'll have enough time, and we'll we'll try to look at it. So, uh, but multi-dimensional. Right now, I just wanted to give you a. a definition of a dimension before I start, you know, going into all the technical details of arrays. So you should understand what is an array. It's a type of variable that can hold several values of the same data type in a single declaration. If I want to declare 100 integers, I'd use an array. If I want dimension, uh, the, the definition of a dimension, it's a pattern for organizing, or for organizing data. Uh, you can have a dimension of uh, students and all the classes they are taking, students and grades. That Those are two-dimensional models. Um, instructor teaching classes every quarter, that's three dimensions. So these are all examples of dimensions, and we will cover the dimensions in detail down the road, right? This is the most perfect example of, uh, of, a dimen of uh, what do you call it? multi-dimensional system so let me let me see if I can pull up a image of a Rubik's cube so I can we basically have X Y and Z axis right sorry X Y Z whichever way you want to look at it it's three-dimensional right so 
I could just look at this first column across. Or I can slice it so I'm only looking at these three cells. So uh, this, this picture will um, come into play when we start talking about multidimensional models. So what if you have this problem? You want to read 100 numbers, compute the average, and find out how many numbers are above the average. How do you solve this kind of a problem? You would declare 100 variables. You declare an array. And then you'll write a loop to read the 100 values. And then you will go through the array to figure out how many numbers are above average, and you'll also compute the average. So let's see, hopefully today we can write the code for this problem after you have learned the basics. So array is a data structure that represents a collection of the same types of data. And this is how, um, this is how uh, uh, an array is declared. We say, we use these rectangular brackets, we name the array, and we use the type. So in the example that uh, you see here, double my list semicolon. If I did that, right, that is a reference of the reference or um, name of the array. Okay? It will contain the address of the blob of memory uh, we are about to create. So when I say new double 10, that basically creates this little, uh, it creates this little blob of memory. And so I have 10, 10 cells, starting with index location zero, all the way to index location nine. Am I doing okay so far? So I have 10 elements in this array, and my reference name of my array, my list, points to the first byte. What is the size of this memory block? I have 10 cells of type double. And the double is how many bytes? You have float and double. Float is half of double. Float is four bytes, 32 bits. So double must be eight bytes. And when you have 10 cells, that will be 80 bytes. Okay, now we are flowing. Right? You need to remember the size of your data types in your head. Well, I guess it will happen once you have used them enough number of times. So maybe I should. I shouldn't push it right now, other than saying it's going to be on the final. So we have a double array. When we use the keyword new, that allocates memory. And when we say double 10, that is saying, I want to allocate memory for 10 doubles. When we start counting, we count from uh, zero. Each one of these cells uh, the thing that's represented in the index or in these rectangular brackets is called the index. So this is the zeroth index all the way up to ninth index. You're going to have to keep this in mind for, for your uh, loops. When you start uh, using array with loops, you'll always need to ma uh, make sure that the last value you account for is um, size of the array minus one. 
size of the array is written right here, it's 10. And you have to say size of the array minus one, which is nine, right? So. Now, there's a new term that we just use here, which is reference. Reference is a type of variable. that contains an address. So even though this is not very important in Java because we don't really um, manipulate memory like we do in other programming languages, we still need to know that when we look at the, when we look at the reference, my list, is going to contain the address of the first byte of my, my list. So, so I would say in this case, will contain the address of the first byte of my list. My list array. Okay? Uh, not really. Is reference the same as a pointer? And the answer is no. Pointers pointers allow you to uh, manipulate memory. Right? But references do not. References just contain an address and that's it. So. Question? Is that C++ one? Yeah, that is probably some other language question. It's, uh, we have pointers in, uh, yeah, C++ or, or C, but not in Java. Okay, so you understand how an array is declared? We use the data type, name of the array, and new double, right? So. And then to access each value, we just say name of the array and then the index value in rectangular brackets. That is like using a, a variable name. So here are different ways of that you can declare a variable. Generally, you specify the data type with rectangular brackets and name of the variable, like you see here. But Java also allows you to put the rectangular brackets after the name. This style is allowed but not preferred. like this. We usually use the rectangular bracket with the data type. Because when you when you treat this as together without a space, the data type declaration is a little bit more clear versus separating it out, right? Because then you've got double and you've got array with the variable name in the middle, which can be confusing. Okay, so this will declare an array variable and then it really doesn't have any memory. If I just say I've declared a variable, how much memory is gonna occupy? Well, what, how much memory does it take to store an address? If you're using a 32-bit operating system, it's gonna be four bytes. If you use a 64-bit operating system, it's gonna be eight bytes. So on your computer systems, most of you are using 64-bit OS. So it's going to be eight bytes. So my list is taking eight bytes. Now, this address that it's going to contain, right, 
that array is declared with this new keyword. You specify the data type and you specify the size. And so if we say new double 10, that creates an array of size 10 of type double. And if I'm using one set of rectangular brackets, each pair of rectangular bracket refers to a dimension. So the array we are creating is a one dimensional array right now. Rectangular bracket refers to a dimension. And we are, at least for a day or so, just worried only about one dimensional array. Right? So. <clears throat> So we have a referring to each value, minus zero, minus one, minus two, and so on, all the way up to minus nine. And that deals with uh, 10 elements in the array. So generally, we do all of this in one shot. You can separate it out, as you saw in the previous slides, if you wanted to. but. Generally, when you declare an array, you would um, you would declare it in one line, like this. So if you look at the last line on this list, is it pretty clear to everyone? Or does it need any explanation? Since I've gone over it in slow motion. Does everyone get it? It's basically, or, or even the, uh, <coughs> let's, let's forget about the last line, but the, how about the second line? this guy right here, right? If that's pretty clear, I think I'm ready to move on to the, the next step. So an array, is, when it's created, right, it goes, when you say new something, right, it, it will go to the operating system and, and, and fetch memory for uh, the size that's specified. So the memory that is requested, requested is generally <coughs> The size of the data type uh, times the number that you have that you have specified. So, and it cannot be changed. I mean, once the size of the array is declared, it cannot be changed. So, in a first or second programming class, we we say, okay, you know, let's work with arrays. Uh, but generally, as you kind of grow up with these programming languages, we end up saying arrays arrays is not a good uh, data type to use because there are better things to use. So, if you want to find the size of the array, you can simply say name of the array dot length. So there are functions. I mean, this is functionality that's built in the Java API or in the Java language, and you can just say my list dot length. So like in the previous slide, you saw my list declared, and my list is of size 10, right? So if I go in and say my list dot length, that will return um, the size of the array. And so uh, I can check that at any time. And it will always be constant because the size of the array cannot be changed. So when an array is declared, all the elements are assigned a default value. So we would assign a zero for all the primitive data types. So if you have an integer, a float, a double, a short, a long, all of those values are assigned a zero. If, we, if it's a char data type, it's assigned a character zero or null. And Boolean data types get the value of false. So far, at least in this course, you're going to be creating an array of uh, primitive data types only. Like the, the, the few data types that we learned at the beginning of the course. Char, Boolean, short, long, float, double, etc. Index variables. Indexed, these are indexed variables, which basically means 
um, each of the locations 0 through 9 are the indices or index values. It starts from 0 to uh, length of the array minus 1. So in fact, if you look at your, this is a picture from your text, you will see that there are 10 values going from 0 through 9 in the picture I showed earlier. And we can say uh, name of the array and then the index value and we can assign a value or read the value from it. So, so here is here are some examples like after the array is created if let's say you wanted to take the value at location 0 and value at location 1 and you wanted to add those and save the result into 2 then this is what this is what you would do. Does that make sense? I'm taking the values at location 0 and 1, computing the sum and saving the result in 2. This is just to show you how index values can be used. Here is another way of declaring and creating an array all in one step. It's a shorthand. So we say my list double array and then we use these uh, parentheses and specify a bunch of values. 1.9, 2.9, 3.4, 3.5. What's going to be the size of this array? Well, it depends on the number of elements that I specify. Since I specified 4, the size of the array is 32 bytes. 4 times 8, it's of type double still. Okay? So we can do all of this in one line. We can declare an array, allocate memory for it, and initialize it with uh, specific values all, all in one line. So, not recommended, but sometimes you have to do this. The other way of doing this would be declaring an array of size 4 and assigning a value to each index location. And you see that in this particular slide. Minus 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if you try to split the shorthand, that won't work. Like you see in this slide. I'm, in this case, I'm declaring an array and then I am initializing the array with, with a set of values in a separate line. And uh, Java will not accept that. It will give a syntax error. So just looking at this, this little program. We declare an array of size 5. So you can see that an array is created and all the values in the array are set to 0 because of the because the data type is of type in. Then we start with for int equals uh, 1, i is equal to 1, i is less than 5. value of i is equal to i plus value of i minus 1. So try to do a little bit of math in your head there. So we are starting the loop with i equal to 1. So we are going to be, we are looking at assigning value to this guy right here. And so we say i is equal to 1, i is less than 5, 1 is less than 5. So we say value of i is equal to 1 plus value of i minus 1. The value of i minus 1 is 0, right? So I say 1 plus 0, so value of 1 becomes 1. So this guy will return and it will become 1. Then I get, then I'm done with that and I increment i by 1. 
So now i is 2, so 2 is equal to 2 plus value of i minus 1, which is 2 minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so this value is 1. So value of uh, 2 should be 3, right? Let's, let's run through this. So in i becomes 1, i is less than 5, and we just discussed that, right? i becomes 1, because 1 plus 0 is 1. Yes, no? Yes. Then we increment i becomes 2. 2 is less than 5, so we'll go in the loop. And value of 2 is 3, because i is 2 plus value of i minus 1 is 1, right here, right? That became 1, so that became 3. Is this clear? After this, i becomes 3. 3 is still less than 5. <coughs> so now, 3 of 6 becomes, uh, I mean, value of 3 becomes 6. Why? Because i is 3 and the value at location 2 is also 3. So it becomes, a, the total becomes 6. i becomes 4. 4 is less than 5. The next value becomes 10 because 4 plus 6. When i becomes 5, the condition is false, and we, we get out of the loop. And then we say value of 0 is equal to value of 1 plus value of 4. So we take the value at 1, which is 1, and the value at uh, 4, which is 10, and we plug the sum into value of 0, which becomes 11. So you'll be doing this like pretty pretty frequently. And we can improve this code a little bit. Rather than say i is less than 5, since I've declared the array of size 5, I could have said uh, instead of i less than 5, I can replace with i is less than uh, values dot length. Okay, because we just we talked about this a, a little bit ago. The length will return the size of the array. The length will return the size of the array. So, questions. So, what we have done is. So far, learned, maybe I can push this a little upward so you guys can see it easily. So what we have done is looked at how an array is declared, what its purpose is, and how to use it in a loop with, with this tracing example that, um, that's in the slide. And, and if you are okay with all of this so far, I'll keep. I'll go to the the next thing. One person is okay. Well, so, someone. <coughs> and the rest of you? Actually, yes. Do we um, do we need to import any Java libraries to use values dot length? Or? Yes. Oh. Yes, you do. And uh, I'll show you that in a moment, but the code is, so to work with arrays, you need to use, uh, you need to say, as a very first line in the program, you have to say java.util.start.array. So array is, a, array is a data type in Java, yes. Java or utils dot star will bring in everything. Okay. <coughs> and generally when you import more than what you need, it may slow down your program, but not significantly. You can show, certainly import the whole thing. Okay? All right. So 
So how do you, so here are some examples. How do you uh, initialize an array by reading values from the user? So we declare an array of some length, like 10, let's say. And then we set up a scanner, which you are very familiar with. And then we say system.out.print or printf as you guys are using printf, right? Starting lab seven. In all your uh, implementations, I'm requesting that. Print lines will lose point. So please don't use system.out.print line anymore. That should become the thing of the past for some good reasons. So we basically say enter 10 values if the length of the array is 10. And then we have a for loop and we call input dot next double 10 times, reading in one value at a time. So that's how, how, how will this array work? Well, how many times will it run if the my list dot length is 10? It'll run 10 times, right? This will initialize an array with 100, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if my size of the array is 10 again, this will initialize the array with random values between one and 100. So I'm saying math.random times 100. How do you print the values of an array? Again, you write a for loop like this, and we basically say system.out.print or printf, and we say my list i with a, with a space. So it'll print all the 10 values for you. With printf, the advantage is that you can control the formatting. With print or print line, you cannot. If I wanted to sum up all the values that are contained in the array, then I can go through the array in a loop, and in my expression I can say total is equal to total plus each value. And then total will contain the sum, summation of all the values in the array, okay? This is a code for finding the largest value in the array. I'm declaring an array, my list let's say of size 10, and it contains the values. And then we say, the maximum value that I know is the first one. I actually want to put this in the debugger and show you how it works. The maximum value I know is the first value. Then what I'm going to do is start my loop with one to max dot length or my array dot length. And if the value in the array, if I come across a value in the array that is greater than what I'm storing in max, then I'll I'll make the make that as new value of max, you see. You see that? And I do this in a loop. So max will contain the highest value. And if I flip this to less than, that can become the algorithm for finding the smallest value. So working with arrays, as you can see, through some of these applications, right? It's a fairly powerful, uh, it's a fairly powerful mechanism. So, now here is one where we are doing somewhat of a random shuffling of the values in the array. So we start with, the back of the array, right? 
i is equal to mileage dot length minus one. So we start with the back of the array, and as long as i is greater than zero, we're going to generate a, a random value. So math dot random generates a random value, and we're going to position that as value of j. The value will be between zero and i based on times i plus 1 that's passed into the random function. So when I get the value of j, it will be somewhere between 0 to i minus 1, right? Or I'm sorry, it will be 0 to i. And then what we do is we start swapping values inside the list. So we take the value at i into 10 and take the value of j into i and take the value of 10 back into j. So we are doing some swapping of location i and j that is that is generated. And the number of times we do it is equal to the basically the length of array. So why would we do this? Just to create an unsorted, have a set of values in the array and create an unsorted array to sort or whatever, if, you, if that's what you want to do. It's just another application of working with array. So in this particular code, we retain the first value but what we are trying to do is move the values in the array. So if i is, we set with, uh, we were set with i is equal to one to the length of the array. And what we are doing is moving the ith value to i minus one. So we start shifting values to the left. And then in the end, we move the first value to the last. So we, we are basically <coughs> right, right, written a, a code for shifting values in the array. So this is where I'd like to stop today, just to give you guys an intro to work with arrays, give you some time to think about it. And then when you come back next time, I'm going to cover some of the applications, and also on Monday, give you guys a new assignment to work on. The one you're working on now is due when? Sunday. Okay, so Monday we'll have our eighth assignment. We've got three more to go, eight, nine, and 10. And so you've got, probably you probably will need some help in class. So I'll be around to, to help you guys out. Okay?